My dear friends, as usual, every month, this is the reading of my report of February 16th, 2024. Dear friends, praise be Jesus and Mary. On January 25th, 2024, the visionary Maria received the following monthly message. Dear children, may this time be a time of prayer. This last message from Our Lady on prayer summarizes in a single sentence the purpose of Medjugorje and Mary's immense desire for us, her children. Neglecting prayer has serious consequences. Let us think of the apparitions of Akita in Japan that have been recognized by the Church, where through the visionary Agnes Katsuko Sasagawa, the Blessed Mother emphasizes the urgency of prayer in these apocalyptic times. Prayer is vital. It cannot be ignored. The future of the world depends on prayer. And yet, people's consciences are asleep in the darkness of materialism. Our Lady does not hesitate to say that. The only weapons left to you will be the rosary and the sign that my son left, the Eucharist. In Akita, Mary strongly invites us to pray for the Pope, for bishops and priests, and to pray in reparation for the evil done by men. She even announces a time when we will see bishops against bishops, cardinals against cardinals. Today, more than ever, our weapons are prayer and the Eucharist. This is no longer the time for speaking and expressing opinions. This is the time for prayer, because a large part of humanity still does not know Christ. After 2,000 years of Christianity, Without Jesus, Mary tells us, you have no peace, no joy, no future, and no eternal life. Message to Maria, July the 25th, 2010. In April 1984, Monsignor John Shojiro Ito, Bishop of Niligata in Japan, declared that the events of Akita are of supernatural origin and quoting the words of Cardinal Ratzinger, that Akita's message is the continuation of the messages of Fatima. In June 1988, Cardinal Ratzinger defined Akita's events as trustworthy. Restarting the first Saturday devotions. Every one of us can actively work for peace not only in our own hearts, but also in the world. At Fatima, the Virgin Mary gave us her program for peace, simple, clear, and effective. In Medjugorje, she helps us to live this program concretely. She created this oasis of peace to achieve what she began in Fatima. This is why she teaches us at length to become bearers of peace in this world without peace. Let's take a look at the highlights of this program. On July the 13th, 1917, while the First World War was raging, Mary recommended to the little shepherds of Fatima certain concrete steps to practice on the first Saturday of each month, also called Saturdays of the Heart of Mary, in reparation for the offenses, blasphemies, and ingratitude that wound her heart and crown it with thorns. This practice means receiving Holy Communion in reparation for these offenses, making a sincere confession of our sins and meditating on the mysteries of the Rosary for 15 minutes. Through the practice of this devotion on these first Saturdays of the month, we have a great opportunity to give Our Lady the totally free gift of our love. She did not fail to make a beautiful promise to those who would practice the first Saturdays. 
since she promises to assist us especially at the hour of death. That is no small thing, but let us freely offer her this prayer out of pure love for her, to console her for the many offenses that are made against her. It will give her immense joy. Offering this free gift demonstrates our love for her. We do not love because we feel forced. We ourselves know well how to recognize a free gift, a true testimony of love. What is freely given goes straight to the heart. I know a man more powerful than God, said the Holy Cure de Ars, St. John Vianney. In a homily to everyone's surprise, he explained, it is the man who prays. Indeed, our prayer is powerful on the heart of God and can alter his plan. Father Matteo Lagrua from Sicily, whose beatification process is underway, is a good example of this. A Franciscan conventual and exorcist created a very large prayer movement in Sicily. The Episcopal Conference of Sicily has given the green light to open his cause for beatification. Testimonies are pouring in and already Sicilians are calling him Beato, which means blessed. His heart was always praying. He radiated peace and love to all. Many of my friends knew him. Here are some facts from his life that can encourage us to pray endlessly. Empty Tank One evening, Father Matteo was traveling with his driver to a town in Sicily to give a lecture. Along the way, his driver Franco warned the priest of a real problem. We are almost out of gas. We are at risk of being stuck. There is a little chance we can find a gas station before we get there. Don't worry, said the father. We will pray. Keep driving. Father Matteo put his head in his hands, as usual, and started to praying in silence. The strange thing is that the fuel dial needle, instead of continuing to drop, gradually moved up, as if an invisible hand were putting fuel in the tank. When they got to their destination, the needle indicated that the tank was completely full. God can do this when he receives the prayers of his children. Such signs were given to many pilgrims coming to Medjugorje in the 80s. Finding no gas station in Yugoslavia, they were still able to drive to Medjugorje. The Lord will think of it. Father Matteo was supposed to drive to a meeting in Agrigento to lead a retreat with Vitanova, some 200 kilometers from Palermo. Four people were with him. In the afternoon, his driver said that it was impossible to leave because the four tires were worn down and it would be dangerous and very unwise to drive in such conditions. In addition, the police could arrest them and fine them heftily. But Father Matteo was not impressed by the obstacle. Start the ignition, let's go, he said, and don't worry. It's up to the Lord to think about it. He put his head in his hands and started praying. The driver knew him well. He knew that Father Matteo's prayer was astonishingly effective and that his fate could move mountains. So he turned on the ignition and started driving. Father Matteo remained in prayer throughout the whole journey, his head in his hands. The 200 kilometers went smoothly. The passengers remained serene albeit a little puzzled. When they got to their destination, the driver rushed outside to see the condition of the tires. When he saw them, he began to weep. He told Father Matteo, look, the four tires that were worn and smooth are now brand new. We can even see the rubber hairs on them as if they have just come out of the factory. This was the man who got everything from the Lord. How did he do it? I believe the answer lies in this message from Mary. Dear children, I invite you to become prayer. July 25th, 2017. Indeed, it is one thing to pray, 
it is another thing to become prayer, then it is Jesus himself who prays to his Father within us. The Father and I are one, Jesus tells us. John chapter 10, verses 30 to 38. And Jesus invites us to be one in him, as he is one with the Father. This is our Blessed Mother's dream for us through her visit to Medjugorje. This is the reason for her constant invitation to pray. She knows the path of sacrifice and happiness involved, and she has been telling us about it for so many years. A suggestion for a good start to Lent. To answer the call of the Theotokos, the Mother of God, I wish to invite each one of us to show our gratitude to God. The aim is to dedicate the entire next day to giving thanks and being grateful to God. Pray only these prayers for 24 hours. How much suffering would be alleviated if we thanked God for everything He gives us instead of complaining? How many evil spirits would stop tormenting us? The enemy flees before a grateful and always joyful heart. The secret to happiness, said Little Flower, is to find wonderful everything that the Lord sends us. Dear children, Mary tells us, thank God for all that he gives you and thank him for all that he takes from you. Dearest Gospa, we absolutely want to enter into eternal life. Your son Jesus shed his blood to prepare a place for us, and he is waiting for us. During this Lent, give us your courage to make the right choices at all costs. In this way, at our great encounter with the Father, we will not regret it, neither we, nor our children, nor our children's children. May God bless you all.